And declare one more time, you say, Lift your voice, everybody can wave it out to Jesus. Yes, I do. If you know that it's by His grace that you've come this far, lift your voice, everybody. Oh, everybody, this far by grace. I know if it had not been for your grace, where would I be? I would have been dead by now, but yes, I do. One more time, say, say, this far by grace. I've come this far by your grace. Yes, by grace. Yes, who I don't know, Yes, who I don't know, I've come this far, come this far by your grace. Everyone, lift your voice, say, this far by your grace. This far by grace. I've come this far by your grace. This far by To Jesus, wave it on to Come on, somebody, wave it on to Jesus. Hey, yes, so I don't know. Come this far, come this far, by your grace. This far, by your grace. I've come this far. Everybody, everybody, hey, say this far by grace. Whoa, 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 nah. Say yes, who I don't see. I've come this far, hey, by. Come on, celebrate Jesus this morning. Hallelujah! Hey, drop your hands, all you people. Put your hands together with Jesus. Come on, come on. I Charlie, I Charlie, I Charlie, I Charlie. Come on, hey. Are you ready now? Come on. I want to see somebody with some crazy dance moves this morning. Hey, 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 hey. Listen. I've come before you today. Everybody, come on. There's only one thing that I want to say. Everybody, help me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to. Thank you, Lord. One more time. I've come before you today. Everybody, there's something that I want to say. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Hey, for all you've given to me. Everybody lift your voice and say, say, for all the blessings that I cannot see. Hey, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. For all you've given to me, you, for all you've given You give it to me, and all the blessings that I can see. Everybody say, Thank you, Lord. I just wanna. Thank hey, you, are you ready to lift your voice? Say, with your grateful, come on. Everybody lift your voice. Say, Bless your name. Thank you, Jesus.
yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my Savior. Every praise, every praise, everybody say, every word of worship, we want that, every praise, every praise, is to our God, every praise, every praise, every praise, everybody say, every word of worship, we want that, every praise, every praise, is to our God, Come on, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. Everybody come on. Glory hallelujah. hallelujah. I cannot see you dancing. Somebody, hey, hey, hey. And you'll be on the place. Yeah, they got to go. Lift your voice. Say, sing hallelujah. Everybody say, glory hallelujah. It's you are. Every praise, every praise. Hey, hey, hey. It's you are God. One more time, sing darling, sing hallelujah, hey. it's to our God, hallelujah, it's to our God, yeah, every praise, every praise, it's to our God, come on, celebrate Jesus this morning, oh, I cannot hear you, give the Lord a shout, come on, enter into his gate with thanksgiving, this morning we are here to say thank you, Jesus, if you know, that is why you're here. Lift your voice and give him worship. Lift your hands, lift your voice and bless his name this morning in this place. He's been good, he's good and forever remain a good God. Lift your voice, he's been so good to us. Many were buried yesterday but we are still standing. A whole lot of people were buried yesterday. Even this morning, some lost their lives. We are still here. It's not because of anything. The Bible says it's not by might, it's not by power. Come on. If you know that you are you are standing here on the rock of, of the grace of Jesus Christ, lift your voice. You gotta give it to him. You gotta thank him this morning. You gotta be grateful, somebody. Sometimes we take it for granted, but I'm here to tell you that that thing is the biggest testimony we could ever have. Come on, lift your voice. Let's give him praise. Worship him. Thank him. He's done a whole lot of things for you. Lift your voice and give it to him. Father, we bless you this morning. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice and give you praise. We worship you this morning. Come on, you are worthy, Jesus. Come on, somebody tell him. Tell him how great he is. I know he know how great he is, but you got to tell him. He said that if you do not do this, I will cause the souls and rocks to do this. And we cannot be standing. We cannot be breathing. Ah, for as I live, as long as I live, I will not, I will not allow the rocks and the stones to take over my praise unto Jesus. Come on, lift your voice. grateful for everything lift your voice and give it to him this morning don't wait for any song girl. you know what he has done for you be just be grateful lift your voice tell him how excellent he is Jesus you are highly exalted this morning we love you Jesus you are God, Elohim, ancient of days, for the rain, oh rain, for there is none. There can never be anyone like you, Lord. Yes, set of days. Rain, rain, rain. We declare that you are God. You are Elohim. Yes, set of days. Oh, rain. 
we say there is life. Come on, church. Like you. Ancient of days, church. Rain, Jesus, rain. Just one more time. Just one more time. You are God. You are God. Say it's you. Elohim. I just want to hear the church. Come on, raise your voices. Raise a sound for Christ this morning. Raise your sound for Jesus. Come on. There is no one like you and there. Like you, Jesus. Nation of days, yeah. Are you ready, somebody? Yeah. Oh, you are. Jesus. This morning, come on, say, there Holy one, yeah. Holy one, 
Bishop to God. Nobody like you. We set through all eternity and we know that you are God of my Say, mighty God, say, mighty God. I bless your name. I bless your name. You are holy one. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you. For you are God. Somebody, are you here? Come on. Why I live my own. Why I sing to you. And you are the reason. You are the reason. I'm alive. And I am here to say. I am here to say. It's all because of you. It's all because of you. Just one more time. Say, you are And the finisher of my faith as I look up to him. It's you there. We want to declare this for the very last time. There is power in your name, say. There is power in your name. If you believe what you are confessing. Yes, miracles are beneath your name. I swear it's a voice, yeah. I swear it's a voice and pray. Lift up your voice on, wherever you him. are. Come on, give it to him. Worship him in this place. It is him that you see. It is the, he's the reason why you are here this morning. He is the reason why you are alive this morning. Lift up your voice wherever you are. Bless the name of the Lord. He is bigger than any situation. He is bigger than any problem. He is bigger than any, anything that you can think about. He is bigger than that issue that you are dealing with. 
Lift up your voice this morning and bless his name. Lift up your voice this morning and magnify his name. He is bigger. He is bigger. Nothing can compare to him. No power can be compared to his might. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Among the courts, who is like unto him? There is none that can be compared to him. The God that we serve is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Nisi. El Shaddai is his name. Elohim is his name. Adonai is his name. This morning you want to lift up your voice and celebrate the goodness of God. You want to lift up your voice and tell him that he has been good. He has been faithful. He has been kind. He has been merciful. This morning we give you praise. This morning we bless your name. This morning we exalt your name. This morning we say thank you for the life that you have given us. Thank you for making us alive, oh God. We give you praise, we give you glory. We say, Lord, uh, if it had not been you on our side, uh, where would we have been? Uh, your goodness, your messes, uh, they are new every morning. Uh, that is why this morning we are standing here uh, with our hands lifted up uh, and with our voices, oh God. Uh, we are saying we give you praise, uh, we give you glory, we bless your name, uh, we exalt your name, uh, we magnify magnify your name. Great are you, O God. Greatly to be praised. We bless your name this morning. We give you praise this morning. In the name of Jesus. Last Sunday we were made to know that the, one of the powers of the resurrection is that he left the grave clothes. This morning you want to pray. That any grave cloth that is still hanging around you by the power of the marvels of resurrection, you are leaving it behind. You are leaving it behind. Jesus. I don't know the kind of grave clothes that you are, you are is lingering around you, but I want you to lift up your voice this morning. That by the power of the marvel of the resurrection, anything that has tied you to the grave, uh, you break loose of it. Lift up your voice, somebody. Uh, and pray and come out of that grave in the name of Jesus. This morning, anything that has tied me to the grave, anything that is still holding me to the grave, anything that is still holding me that I cannot come out of the tomb, I lift up my voice this morning and I speak to it by the resurrection power that I am coming out. I am coming out. I am coming out in the name of Jesus. I leave those grave close behind in the mighty name of Jesus that great glow of shame that great glow of poverty that great glow of disappointment that great glow that has been on me that I cannot let go by the power of the resurrection I break loose I break free in the name of Jesus I am coming out with a blast. I am coming out with a blast. I am coming out with a blast. I by the marvels of resurrection, I am free. By the marvels of resurrection, I am liberated. By the marvels of resurrection, I, I am out of anything that has held me bound. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to declare your victory. Lift up your voice and begin to declare your victory. Speak it out. The angel told them that he is not here again. 
He is not here. He is alive. He is as resurrected. Somebody declare your victory. Somebody declare your victory. You have come out of that tomb. You have come out of that grave. You are a free person this morning. You are a liberated woman this morning. You are somebody who is free. What the Bible says, for who the Son sets free is free indeed. This morning we thank you for our freedom. We thank you for our liberation. We thank you, oh God, for our liberty. We thank you that the chains that bound us have been broken and we have been set free. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name. And let the victorious person in the house shout a big amen. Put your two hands together and celebrate your victory. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody and tell the person, we are walking in the marvels of resurrection. Tell the person, look at me very well. The old man is no longer me. This that you see here today is the resurrected man. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Let's kindly take our seats. On behalf of our Father, Reverend Wisdom, I want to welcome you all to this morning's service. I'm happy to see you, and we are glad that you have made it to this morning's service. We want to tell you that when we look around, it is, it is not encouraging. We are still doing every effort to make sure that all the people that are not coming to church will come back to church. So please, as we have been told, we have that mission to bring back the ones that have gone out. So I want to plead with everybody this morning and charge you that when you look around, if what you see you don't like, then do something about it. Amen. We used to sit first service, the whole back was full. It is not a good thing for us to come to church and be like this. I'm appealing to everyone. Take your phone. You know somebody. Somebody is in your home cell. Somebody is in your, your MDP class, somebody is in your area that you have not seen for a while. Go to that person, visit that person, call the person, encourage the person, and bring the person back. Hallelujah. Jesus said, as you did for these ones, you did it for me. God bless you as you take this charge. Amen. We want to take the opportunity to welcome all our first-time visitors. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, just rise to your feet. Let us give you that special Grace Chapel welcome. Anybody here like that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody and tell the person, next week, I'll be looking out for the one that you bring to church. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to take testimonies. Amen. Say we overcame him by the blood and by the word of our testimony. When we give testimony, we tell the devil that he is already defeated. When we give our testimony, we are reaffirming that we are victorious. When we give testimony, we are telling the world that God has been good to us. If you have a testimony, don't sit down. Please walk to the front and let us hear your testimony. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together. Let me encourage you and let me... It has to be brief. What was your situation before? What has God done for you? And what are you thanking God for? Hallelujah. The Lord has been good to me so much. Since we started January, I think two months now, I haven't been here. I got up early in the morning one day, I was praying. All of a sudden, I felt a shock pain uh, from my foot up to this side a very sharp pain so I couldn't even put my leg down like this and walk hey I said what is happening so I took some of the oil I rubbed some there I drink some still I was in pain severe one I couldn't even walk and I kept on praying 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 by God's grace by God's grace. The favor and the grace in this house, the marvelous and the wonders, I'm healed totally. 
by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much. Daddy, I thank you so much. God bless you. So God bless you. Oh, healing is in this house. Amen. Deliverance is in this house. Anybody here who wants to give another testimony? Testimony time. Hallelujah. We thank God so much. God bless you. As God has healed you, we pray that anybody here who is also looking forward for a healing from God, may God touch you by this testimony. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to take our first offering. When we come into the house of God, we come with a prepared offering. You want to take that offering in your hands, speak a word on it, put a demand on that offering, and let us invite the Grace Chapel Choir to minister to us whilst we bring our first offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Is somebody happy to be here this morning? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Can we be on our feet, please? Can we humbly be on our feet? We want to do this song together. And can we put our hands together too? Like that, come on. So as we bring our offering, we dance to glorify the name of the Lord. Hey! Yeah! Wandering into the night Wanting the place to hide This weird soul This bad world And I try to bring up my mind just can win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond Just when I run out of room I met a man I didn't know And he told me that I was not alone Say Shots in this place. Yeah. I cannot deny what I've seen. Got no choice but to believe. My doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my own friends. Burning to be honest. You can just keep it moving. Now you ain't welcome here. We want to say it. Now till I, from now till I, walk on. Say I'm saying no more. To save my soul. Then you ain't what's up. I'm 
celebrate Jesus, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The other part is that you raised me up, you changed my name. Let's, let's, let's all say together that part. Projector, give us that. Everything that happens in this place is prophetic. Hallelujah. It's spiritual. Amen. You want to say together, you pick me up. You pick me up. Turn me around. Turn me around. You place my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank the savior. Because he healed my heart. Because he healed my heart. He changed my name. He changed my name. Forever free. Forever free. I am not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank God. Put your hands together and keep call the shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. You know, there was one part that said, Hell has lost one. Hell has lost one. Aleke de Bohosha. They thought that they were holding him down. They thought that by killing him, the world was coming to an end. But they did not know that the death of Jesus brought my freedom. Come on, give the Lord a yeah. shout of praise. I am the one that hell has lost. Yes. Lift up your hands and say, I am the one that hell has lost. I am the one that hell has lost. Clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands wherever you are. And bless the name of the Lord and say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you, the Lord. You brought salvation to me. I am grateful to you, O oh God. Lift up your voice wherever you are. Ya Paul Ledia do Sande Bokosha. Repanda dia delebo shande de bliandazai. Lift up your voice wherever you are. Praise the name of the Lord. Kela balabosha. Ya pande dia zunde de de bashada. Repaya baba dia zunde de de bosha. Ale baba soli ante ni mi cabrando sa. Reba baya blando se de 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 bosha. Ya paya baba de sande de blaya. Repaya baba ya baba ya baba. Ya pala la la ba shande bliandazaya. Cora Pale Biandosa, Ya Palabo, Shere de Biandosa, Ya Polidia Zunde de Devosha, Ya Palabo, Senda de Adasaya, Atinimi Cabando, Sheleliada, Rapa, Babalia Zunde de Ada, for us. Ima Colobo, Shande de Biandosa, Rapa, Baba Baba Bosha, we bless your name, Jesus. We thank you, O God. We praise your name. You are a good God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the sacrifice on the cross. Thank you, O God, for what you did for us. We are grateful unto you, most high God. This morning be exalted in the midst of your people. I want us all to help sing the song. He paid the debt. He did not owe. I owe a debt. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Now I can sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. Lord Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. He paid a debt. He did not owe. You believe it? I owe. If you believe it, lift up your hands wherever you are. In worship, in prayer, to wash my sins away. Now I can sing a brand new song. Amazing grace, Lord, Lord Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Now I can sing oh, a brand new song. Amazing grace, Lord 
Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, pain and death that I could never be. Now I can sing, now I can sing a brand new song of amazing grace. Oh, Lord Jesus, pain and death that I could never be. He paid a debt. Oh, I owe a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Now I can sing. Now I can sing a brand new song, amazing grace. Oh, Jesus, pay. Oh, Jesus, pay. today I thank you for a brand new song you have put on my lips I just want to say thank you this morning we say glory to your name most high God be exalted among us and in the midst of your people let your word bring light let your word bring life let your word bring illumination let your word come with power let your word bring freedom let your word bring understanding in the name of Jesus, let your word bring healing in the lives of your people, the bodies that need healing. We pray that your word shall bring healing in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, and let a believer shout a big amen. Somebody put your hands together and give the Lord praise wherever you are. Hallelujah. You may be seated. God bless you for coming. Hallelujah. We thank God so much for this day. This is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Had it not been for the Lord on our side, where would we have been? Ask the person by you, where would you have been if it had not been for the Lord? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God so much for this opportunity. And I thank our Father, Reverend Wisdom, for this great opportunity. So bring the word of the Lord to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning we continue speaking on the marvels of resurrection life. The marvels of his resurrection life. And I believe that by the end of the service your life will be blessed and you will receive something that will take you home. Hallelujah. And be with you for the rest of your life. Amen. Amen. Life. Our life's journey is like a man who is running and seeking to, it's journey that he's going on, his quest is to reach a certain destination and he's pushing with all his strength, with all his effort, with all his energy. Hallelujah. There's a story of this gentleman who saw a race that was going on, that was being taken place at a, at a particular location. And the race, the reward was that he was going to get some dollars and his focus was that he was going to use the dollars to help his friends who could not pay his medical bills. So he began the race and as the, he was running the race, the race was not just running. You run, you cycle, you swim. All these three together as part of the race. While they were all running the race together, he got to a place where he met a homeless man along the journey of the race and this man stopped him and he stopped he didn't want to stop at a point but he stopped he stopped and met this man and he was having a conversation with the man 
But he's on the race. He wanted to go quickly. But he still gave the man the time. And then he told the man he has to win the race. Because there is a reward that he wants to get. Hallelujah. So he left the man and went on. Unfortunately, he didn't see any of the people he was running with. It means they were all far gone. So he got to the end of the race and he needed to show his registration slip for them to register where his, he's got into. And he couldn't find it. He has gotten to the end, but he couldn't find what would show that you actually registered for the marathon and then you have won or you, this is your place. But the woman who was picking the registration was smiling. Was just smiling whilst he was sad. Then he was still looking for it. And then the woman said, oh, the registration slip has already been brought. You were the first. You won the race. Hallelujah. You know what happened? The time he spent with this homeless man. This homeless man, in his understanding, was an interaction he had with Jesus. And he went ahead of him and won the race on his behalf. He understood that it is not going to be the strength you push into the journey of life and into the journey and the race. But the race is not to the swift or how strong you are. But time and chance happens to us all. It is not how fast you are running, but the step you take to interact with the Father, He takes over the race and He wins on your behalf. Hallelujah. This is what our Messiah did for us. In our journey of life, when we did not have any hope, he came in and said, my brother, my son, take rest. I'm going to fight for you. I'm bringing victory for you. And I'm bringing your win to you. Hallelujah. May somebody win that race that you are going through and you think that you are so down in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The life between God and man in the Garden of Eden was an interaction. There was fellowship between God and man in the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. But at a point, there was the introduction of sin. And man lost the direct relationship that we had with God in Eden. That fellowship that we had with God, that relationship, that communication that we had with God, man lost it. Amen? The Bible says that God took man out of the garden lest they eat of the other tree and they live forever in their sin. And man left, moved. God moved man out of the Garden of Eden. When God moved man out of Eden, he instituted another means possible where man could still interact with him. But then, in this particular order, it wasn't everybody that had access to interact with him. No. There was a, a particular group of people. And these people were the Levites, and these were the priesthood lineage. And there were specific instructions of who is a priest and how a priest behaves and what a priest must do in the house of the Lord, in the temple of the Lord. Amen. And so consistently, the relationship between God and man now became one that went through a certain priest. Hallelujah. A mediator. Somebody who stood between God and man. So it was no longer anybody, not anybody could relate to God any longer. Unlike what was happening in the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. So the duty of the priest was to offer sin offering, not only for the, for the people, but for himself as well. Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 4 verse 3 to 21 speaks about it. So the other thing is that the most important duty that the high priest also was doing was to conduct the service on the day of atonement. That's the 10th day of the seventh month of every year. Once every year. He's the only one who was allowed to enter into the most holy place interact with God. Hallelujah. He, the holy place is behind the veil to stand before God, make sacrifices on his behalf and on the behalf of the people once a year. Once a year. And so, whatever you go through, any particular sin, any problem, you must wait for that day. Hallelujah. You must wait for that day. And even that day, it was only one person who goes there. He brought the blood into the Holy of Holies. He sprinkled the blood on the, on, on the mercy seat, God's throne. He did this atonement for himself and for the people. Hallelujah. 
If we want to understand this high priest order, one of the, we want to look at Jesus Christ coming as our high priest. Praise the Lord. You know, Jesus Christ coming to us, Jesus was not in the lineage of the Levites. And so, there was a complete turnover. Hallelujah. There was a complete change around. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 9 verse 26. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 26. I want to bring you to a point and then we'll, we'll look at one of the marvels of his resurrection. One of the things, great things that happened at the death of Jesus, when Jesus died. Hallelujah. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ came to make one sacrifice and then that was it. Praise the Lord. So Jesus Christ is our high priest forever. He, he belonged to a different tribe. He wasn't in the lineage of the Levites. So ideally he wasn't. If you are looking at the calculations of men, Jesus was not qualified to be a priest. That, that was given to Moses in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. Because the high priest or the priest only came from the lineage of the Levites. And he was not. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so, by this order, Jesus would not have been a high priest. But what Jesus came to do was to change that order. That was why Christ came. So that the priestly order, the process, that's why the Pharisees did not understand who Jesus was and what he came to do. That is why they could not understand that who is this man that can say that your sins are forgiven. No, it's by, there was a process that has to go through before your sins must be forgiven. But this man will just tell you that your sins are forgiven. Who are you? That's why the Pharisees did not recognize and honor his personality or who he was. Hallelujah. Amen. But the coming of Christ was to defy this particular order where there was the sacrifice. So if you look at it, the replica, whatever was happening in the time, in the Old Testament, when Jesus came, he made that sacrifice once and for all by his blood. The blood that he presented was the sacrifice that he made on our behalf so that we will also be able to have access so that our sins will be forgiven and they will not continually be going back onto him every now and then for the forgiveness and the blood being killed over and over again. Hallelujah. That's why when Jesus came, he had the opportunity. He was able to heal the sick. Just go ahead and heal the sick. He was able to forgive sins. But the Levitical order, there must be a lamb that must be presented. And the lamb must be killed. And it was the order of the high priest who must do this. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 8. Read scriptures and then we'll go to the other part that I want us to look at. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 8. So now this is the man, this is the main point of the thing that we are seeing. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord erected. Not and not man. Hallelujah. This tabernacle the Lord himself erected and not man. Praise the Lord. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it is necessary that this one also has something to offer. Hallelujah. Amen. For if he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law. Hallelujah. Who served the copy and shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle, for he said, see that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry. 
inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on what? Better promises. Hallelujah. A mediator of a much better superior covenant, which was established on much better promises. Hallelujah. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are come, and says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant. And I will... And I disregarded them, says the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. I, after those days, says the Lord, will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Praise the Lord. So, this particular order that existed, the institution of Aaron's line, merely showed an example of how it worked. It was a physical representation of the spiritual reality. Hallelujah. The priesthood helped us to understand and visualize what takes place in heaven. Amen. So, there was the outer court, there was the inner, there was the holies of holies, where the priest alone goes there to interact with God. Hallelujah. This is why Jesus came, to change that order. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, verse 9, chapter 9. Then indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and the earthly sanctuary. For a tabernacle was prepared, the first part, in which was the lampstand and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called the, holies of, the holiest of all, which had the golden censer, and the ark of the covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pots that had the manna, the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant. And above it were the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat of these things. We cannot now speak in detail. Verse 6. Now when these things had been thus prepared, the priests always went into the first part of the tabernacle, performing the service but into the second part the high priest went alone once a year not without blood which he offered for himself and for the people's sin the high priest does not go there without blood he always goes without with blood praise the lord let's look at what jesus came to do jesus came to give us that greatest sacrifice he came to offer himself so that the essence of him offering himself, so that we, me and you, we will be able, he will, he's making atonement on our behalf with his blood as the priest and the high priest on our, of us, for us. Hallelujah. So he presents his blood on the altar as a sacrifice so that you and I will be able to be forgiven. Because the blood, the high priest, what he does with the blood is that he goes into the holies of holies, presents the blood, and then there is forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. Amen. There is some peculiar thing that also happens. Anytime the blood is presented, and then, so, if the blood is presented, the sins of the people automatically are forgiven. Because he sees the blood. This is the instruction that God gave. And then he forgives the sins of the people. Hallelujah. So, Jesus gave himself as that sacrifice. And on the cross, the people, the Pharisees, like I was saying earlier, they really did not acknowledge him. Because who is he? He wasn't in the order, Levitical order. He didn't have that mandate. He cannot tell that sins are forgiven. What is he talking about? Hallelujah. But he kept on doing what the Father had called him to do. Praise the Lord. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, in his prayer, he wished that the cup was taken over from him. But he still pushed on. And he went to the cross. 
Then on the cross, he made sacrifices for us. Hallelujah. On the cross, he went through pain that we will not go through the pain. He went through shame that we will not go through the shame any longer. He drained his blood upon the altar once and for all as a sacrifice so that me and you, our sins will be forgiven. So that me and you, our sicknesses will be healed. So that me and you, our troubles and our problems, he will deliver us from them all. Hallelujah. But you see, whilst on the cross, order in the temple was still there. The Levitical order, the chief priest process, all these things were still there. The veil that separated the outer court with the holies of holies was still there. Praise the Lord. Let's open our Bibles to Matthew. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 27 verse 50. The Bible says that, And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earthquake and the rock splits, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves, after his resurrection, they went into the holy city, and he appeared to many. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the very moment Jesus gave up the ghost, what happened? The veil got torn, the earth quaked, the rock split, and the graves were open, and many bodies came. Wow. On the cross, the very moment he died, then it means that the blood had now been presented by his death. So whilst he was still hanging, and he was still talking, Eli, Eli, Namasa, Batani, and all those things, the earth did not quake. The veil did not tear. The rocks did not split until he died completely. Then this is what happened. The veil was torn from top to bottom. The earthquake. When you look into the Old Testament, there's a verse in the Old Testament that I want us to look at. The Bible says, the Leviticus, Numbers chapter 35 verse 28. Numbers chapter 35, verse 28. You see there. Because he should have remained. Because he should have remained in the city of refuge until the death. So you go back a little so that we can read it well. Maybe from verse 27. But if the manslayer at any time goes outside the limits of the city of the refuge. When you go read it, maybe you get it. Where he fled, go down. And the avenger of blood finds him outside the limits of the city of refuge. And the avenger of blood kills the manslayer. He shall not be guilty of blood. Please go on. Because he should have remained in the city of refuge until the death of the high priest. Listen. But after the death of the high priest, the manslayer may return to the land of his possession. Please go on. And these things shall be a statute of the judgment of the judgment to you throughout your generation in your dwelling. So what happens is that when the high priest dies, when the high priest dies, a freedom is given to those who are, they, they give freedom to slayers, people who they say are, are manslayers. There is some kind of freedom that is given to the guilty. Hallelujah. And so, when Jesus gave up the ghost as the high priest of our time and died on the cross, the Bible says that the veil did not just tear, but the grave split open and the dead bodies came back to life. And so, the death of Jesus as our high priest also brought freedom and liberty to us. That was why the grave, those who were even died dead and bound with the, with the bones of of death, they were set free by the death of Jesus and by giving up his ghost. Hallelujah. 
The high priest, the, when he dies, when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible said the veil was torn. Why was the veil torn? Why? You see, when you look at the prescription or the instructions that Jesus, God gave to Moses on how the veil must be, he said that the Solomon's temple was 30 cubits high. Herod increased it to 40 cubits according to the writing. A first century Jew. So, the height of the veil, the veil is built in such a way that it is strong, it is tall, it is, it's not like the curtains in your home. I gave them a picture of how the veil should look like, if you can project it. How long it is, I don't know if you can see it well, but you see how, so like in this place, Let's say that the veil was here. It came from the top to the bottom. Hallelujah. Let's see the second one. When you see the texture of the veil, it's very thick. So that it will last ages and many years. Amen. So that nothing will make it tear or anything. This, so this particular, the reason why I want you to look at it. Let me see the third one. The reason why I want you to see a picture of this is that you understand what happened. This is not somebody who went to take a blade and cut this thing. It was a spiritual thing that happened. Hallelujah. What divided and what separated man from God, the blood has been presented. The sacrifice has been made again, has been made already. And so there was no need for that separation. I started by saying that in the Garden of Eden, there was relationship that existed between man and God in Eden. And so that relationship, when it was broken, that was when the priesthood system was put in place, that man would now relate, but then the priest also presented blood so that they were atone. So now if Jesus, God has sent Jesus to present his blood upon the altar, then there was no need for the veil. Hallelujah. Is somebody following me? So the Bible says that in tw Matthew 27 verse 50, and Jesus cried out with a loud voice and yielded up a spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn. This is one of the greatest things that took place at the death of Jesus. The tearing of the veil. Hallelujah. So, when you look at the Exodus 26 verse 31, this is how he said, he said, you shall make a veil woven of blue purple and scarlet thread and fine woven linen. It shall be woven with artistic design of cherubim. You shall hang it upon the four pillars of acacia wood overlaid with gold. The ahood shall be gold upon the four sockets of silver and you shall hang the veil from the clasps. Hallelujah. So these were the specific instructions that was given about how the veil must be done. So the veil separated man, the holies of holies from the outer court. And it was only the priest that goes into it. Now when Jesus died and made that sacrifice upon the altar, then he granted us access. So now it's no longer going to be the high priest that must go to the father on your behalf. He has given us access. So the thing that was separating us from assessing the presence of God, assessing the throne of God, assessing the mercy seat of God, now the high priest will not go longer there. But you can go there yourself. Hallelujah. So the very first benefit that we got from the breaking of the veil was we have free, unrestricted access to God, the Father, through Christ. Fellowship. Unrestricted. And so if today you are a Christian, that you have made your access to God restricted, you have put your own barriers there. Then you have put the barriers there. It's not God. Because he has opened the way for us. The veil kept God's presence hidden from us. Christ's atonement allowed us to enter into God's presence. Because Christ, because of Christ, we are beloved sons and daughters of the Father. 
Hallelujah. We now have access into his presence. And so the glory now, the Bible says in Acts 17, 24, it says that now his presence, his glory is no longer going to be limited with temples. If you wanted to assess the presence and the glory of God, there was a process you must go through. Hallelujah. That is no longer going to be made. He said that God who made the world and everything in it, since he is the Lord of the heaven, he earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Not again. Somebody say not again. Hallelujah. So a free, unrestricted access. So here in Grace Chapel, one of the things that we, we would always want to teach you to understand is that the veil has been torn. That thing that separated man from God, that allowed man to, that, to go through a particular person before he can get his sins to be forgiven, he broke it on the cross. And so today, like our sister was sharing her testimony, when I am sick in the middle of the night, I will not need to come to the high priest and go and tell the high priest that go and make atonement for me. Or I will not need to sit down and wait for the year to come to an end. Hallelujah. She will not need to pick up a phone and call a pastor before she can have healing to herself. But you see, she can go before the throne of grace himself. And say that Lord, the blood that you shed was for me too. So by your stripes... I have been healed. I receive my healing today in the name of Jesus. By your faith, you will be healed. He has made us priests as well unto himself. And so we can go into his presence now and have fellowship. That kind of fellowship that was lost between man and God in Eden, that fellowship, he restored it. By the breaking of the veil. Hallelujah. Amen. Another benefit we get from the veil that was broken. Is that his glory was revealed unto us. Praise the Lord. There was the glory. The glory that was behind the veil. That was, that was the, on the mercy seat. That was only the, it was only the high priest. That could go and see the glory. Now me and you, in our room, on our bed, we can see his glory manifest. We can experience the glory of God in everything that we are doing. Child of God, one of the things I want you to appreciate today in this message is that Jesus' death on the cross gave us some power, some mandate, some access, some authority. And so, we will not be like the Pharisees who could not accept the fact that by Jesus saying that your sins are forgiven, they are forgiven. We will not be like the high priest who will not believe that how can this man say that rise up and walk and you are rising up to walk. Because the power that Christ gave to us cannot be compared to the authority that the high priest had in those times. Do you know that even when they had to go into the holies of oblivion, it was once a year. They could not just go. Do you know that even before they go, they hang a thread and then their bells are ringing. If they can die there, oh. But you see now, we have access to the presence of God. We can assess his presence. We can see his glory. We can experience his power in his presence. Hallelujah. And so by the revelation of his power and his glory, we too be able to say that be healed in Jesus' name. We can lay our hands on any sick part of our body and healing can take place. We can stand and speak against demons and principalities and say, lose your hold in Jesus' name and they will leave. Because they are not obeying you, they are obeying the son. Oh, hallelujah. When we come through the blood, they don't see us, but they see Jesus. 
the blood that was presented, they see the Messiah, Christ. Hallelujah. You see, when I was preparing this, one of the things that came to my mind was that I was looking at it that that access that Christ gave to us, then it just hit. You know, in, in, in the Garden of Eden, in the Garden of Eden, it was the devil that had interactions with Eve and asked him questions, has the Lord said? And then went through the process and sin entered the world. Then it also occurred to me that, do you know that in the, when Christ resurrected, like Pastor was saying last week, in the tomb, when he came out, it was a garden. In that same garden, he appeared to Mary, another woman. And this time, his appearance to Mary was not questioned from the devil, but he gave him an instruction. He said that, go and tell them. In Eden, we lost it through the woman by the questions that the devil asked, which he did not have answers. But when Christ resurrected and revealed himself unto Mary, which was the woman, he gave her instruction what to go and do. Give her power to go and tell the men. Relationship was restored at the death of Christ. He met the woman. Pastor said that even before he presented himself to God, he met the woman. And spoke to her. It's a woman. Mary. It's a Rabboni teacher. That was when she recognized. She heard the voice and recognized him. Relationship restored. Malekadebo. Relationship restored. Now we have access. So Mary went to go and tell. Now we have been given a word and a mission and an assignment to go and tell. That he is not there, but he is risen. Hallelujah. He is no longer in the grave, but he is risen. There is restriction that we had to assess the presence of God is no longer there. But now we have that access into his presence. Hallelujah. The veil has been torn. There is no barrier. There is no restriction holding us any longer. Hallelujah. One of the things that we want to look at is that the assurance that this is all made possible by the grace of God, by the blood that Christ was shed upon the Calvary cross. It is just the blood. And that is why you and I, we all have the opportunity to come into that presence. So that we all can assess his throne of grace without restriction. Hallelujah. It's no longer going to be the work of the priest. But it's going to be you. You can go before the Father and call on the name of the Lord. And say, Lord Jesus, help me. Help me. Hallelujah. It's no longer going, I'm not going to get to the point and afin yeko akwa hirihe sofo. And yeko hirihe priest. Relationship has been restored. Fellowship, we have fellowship once again with the Father. So that today, we can sit with him. That's why we were singing the song that hell has lost one. Hallelujah. We will dance on the grave. We will rejoice for what he has done for us. We will celebrate for the access he gave to us. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Put your hands together. Let's rise up on our feet as we pray. If if there is meaning to this word to you, there is some form of understanding that you have this word. If there is anything that maybe you did not even understand what we're talking about, I just want to put it together and say that the death of Christ on the cross by giving up the ghost the earth shook, the veil was torn. And so, you want to say that you have access to the presence of God in the name of the Lord. Lift up your hands and thank him 
for the blood. Thank him for the greatest marvel that took place on the cross. The marvel of his resurrection life. That his death on the cross did not only bring us forgiveness of sin or did not only atone for our sin, but a restored fellowship to him once again. For and so we also, we God. have fellowship with the Thank Father your Lord today. Jesus. Oh, Lift up your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Thank him for the fellowship that was restored Thank you for by his God. Thank you God. Thank Thank you that fellowship has now been restored and we now have access into the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank him that what was not, what did not exist from the beginning, the priestly order has been defied and now we also we have access into the presence of the Lord. We have access into his presence and we can assess his throne in the name of his grace. Lift up your voice wherever you are. And thank the Lord. Father, we thank you for restoring the back to yourself, O God. Thank you, God, that we separated us from you by your death on the cross. As we come in the name of Jesus, we no longer are restricted to God. We come to you boldly, O God. Let us now come boldly to the throne of God. Where we will give you mercy. And thank you, O oh God, for the work that you have done for us, O oh God, for giving up the ghost, O oh God, that we will have access to your throne room, God, that we will have direct access to you, O oh God. We bless you this morning, O oh God. Thank you for casting on the cross for us, O oh God. Thank you for the power of the cross, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, that we can now have access to your throne room. In the name of Jesus. One of the things that happened when the veil was torn is that the glory of the Lord was revealed. You want to lift up your hands and you want to say, Lord, all the days of my life, I want to see your glory. Amen. I want to experience your glory. I want to feel your glory around me. I want to see your glory. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name Jesus. of Jesus, Father, there, is no longer, Jesus. there is no longer restriction Father, God, as, you have as to what we can to see. Us. But Your now, we have access to see his glory. In this glory, of God. glory. In all the days of our lives, we have access to see his glory. Let us behold Your face, In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let us behold Your glory, In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Behind the veil, there were great things. The presence of God was there. The mercy seat of the Lord was there. The glory of the Lord was there. Hallelujah. The veil has been torn. It is like opening a gate at the stadium. And when they were taking, they are taking gates free. And then now they open the gate, free gate. People run and they take their seats. We want to enter into this. That's holies of holies. And take what belongs to us. The healing, the prosperity, every good thing, the mercy.
mercy of the Lord, if it's mercy of the Lord that you need by the access we have gained into the holies of holies, you want to speak a prayer this morning. In the name of Jesus. As you have entered by the breaking of the veil and by what Christ did for us on the cross. I will receive. We we'll lay hold of that in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We will not be like the Pharisees who cannot accept these things. We want to enter. We want to enter. And take up our healing. We take up our deliverance. Take up the authority that we have being given to us as priests. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord, we find the power of the Lord. We the 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 we have received power and authority. Hallelujah. We want to walk in that authority. I want to tell you that that power that was given to us by the breaking of the veil, it, it's not a mere power. It's the greatest power that you can receive. The greatest thing that Christ can give to us is that access he gave to us to come to him. So as from today, I want you to walk in the knowledge of who you are. Understanding what Christ did for us on the cross. Hallelujah. With every eye closed, wherever you are, if you are here, and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you have never received him into your life. You've never invited him to be your Lord. We want to give you the opportunity today that you invite him into your heart and make him your Lord and your Savior. By doing that, then it means that you are presenting yourself to him and say that I cannot save myself. I acknowledge what you did on the cross. Save me, Lord. If you have anybody here like that, I want you to lift up your hands whilst we pray with you. If you are watching us on the live streaming, we want to pray with you as well. If you've lifted up your hand, I want you to take a step forward and come here whilst we lead you in prayer. If you are here like that and you want to give your life to Jesus, and you raise your hand. Please take the bold step and come forward. And we'll lead you in prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's close our eyes. And whilst we pray for these ones that are here this morning. God bless you for coming. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Just please lift up your hands. You want to say, Lord Jesus. I thank you for today. I thank you. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for dying for me. Jesus, Jesus today, today, I renounce all the works of the devil in my life. I renounce all the works of the and devil. I invite you into my heart. And I invite you into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. And my personal Savior. And my personal all the days of my life. All the days of I will serve you. I will serve and I will worship you. And I will worship in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's close our eyes and pray. Our Father, we thank you for these ones. We lift them up before you. And anyone that gave us life to you, watching us live on the screen, we pray that as they are presented their lives into your hands, your hand will rest upon them. You continue to protect them. You deliver them from every evil. The powers that tormented their lives when they did not know you today, they have received a new life. They are new creatures. All things are passed away. Today, all things have become new. They have been set free from the power of sin. And now you have been moved into the marvelous life of Christ Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And let a believer shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. Peace. Put your hands together for the Lord and let's give him praise. Let's welcome Pastor. The marvels of the resurrection life. Amen. Tell somebody, I have access. To his glory, to his power. I have access to the mercy seat where I can obtain mercy. Pastor Nana, God bless you so much. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. 
We want to take our tithes. If you are here and you brought your tithes, kindly bring it so that we can receive it and say the priestly blessing over you. Tithes. Mighty Father, as we leave these tides before you, O God, look down from heaven and open the windows of heaven. Pour out your blessings over these ones as they have brought their tides, O God. Let the eyes of the enemy be blinded over them. Father, make provision for them in the name of Jesus. Between now up to the time that they will bring back their next tide, Father, let the doors of blessings be opened unto them. Shut the eyes of the enemy over them and let every evil be far away from them. Let their storehouses, O oh God, never, O oh God, lack any good thing because they have brought what you have asked them to bring to you. The remainder is in your hands and you will bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to take our second offering whilst we receive the announcement. Good morning, everyone. Kindly take note of the following announcements. We'd like to say a warm welcome to all our first-time visitors. After service, please don't be in a hurry to leave. We have some pastors who are available to have a conversation with you and introduce you to the Grace Chapel family. Kindly join Reverend Wisdom every, every morning from Monday through to Friday from 4.45 a.m. to 6 o'clock a.m. for the Fragrance of Glory Morning Devotion. Join us um, using, connect with us using our, um, all our um, social media platforms. That is Zoom, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Copies of the Growing into Maturity 91 Days Devotional Volume 2. And the new Overcoming Stagnation books are available. Get a copy for yourself at, 40, at 20 and 40 Ghana cities respectively. Get one for yourself or a family member, a friend. And even as you go on your evangelism and outreaches, you can use it as a souvenir or as a tool for evangelism. Our church weekday prayer meetings continues. On Monday evenings, we have our prayer service in tree, which starts at 5.30 p.m. On Wednesday, we have our prayer and teaching service, which is at 5.30 p.m. On Friday, we have the encounter with the burning flame, which also starts at 6.30 p.m. And from Monday through to Thursday, we have the grace prayer chain, we takes place in the morning from 10 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. So if you're on leave, if you're on vacation, or you have a one-hour lunch break, you can pass through and join us as we travel in prayer. If you are here and you have any peculiar prayer need that you can speak to anyone about, we have a solution for you. Kindly write down your prayer request and your prayer points on a piece of paper. Drop it in the prayer box at the gallery and we have a team of members who will join you in faith to see that the prayer that you have written will be prayed upon. We are meeting at our various home cells in our communities. This is every Sunday. And depending on your home cell, you'll be meeting on a weekday. If you are here and you have a home cell, today is a good time to join. If you are here and you don't have a home cell after service, just come to the front. See the pastors. Let them know where you stay and a home cell will be assigned to you. If you're also here and it's been a long time since you joined your home cell, today is a good time to resume. All members are kindly being informed that the schedule for evangelism on Saturdays for all departments has been posted on the notice board for our attention. If you are here and you are in any department or you're a church member, evangelism is part of our duties as church members. So if you are here, kindly get to the notice board after service. Check the time that has been assigned to you for your Saturday, and then you can go for your evangelism. If you can't check the notice board, so you can see your um, departmental head, and they can let you know which day has been assigned to you so that we all go out 
to evangelize because the Bible makes us understand that anyone who wins a soul is wise. Members are also being reminded that the prayer chain, which was instructed by our general overseer, continues every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. As we come here to pray every Saturday and we go on our evangelism drive, this one is also available on the notice board. So kindly check the time that has been assigned to you so that you join here that sat every Saturday for us to pray. And also see your departmental heads let them, so that they will tell you the time that has been assigned to you. And we all join here to stoke the fire. Final funeral arrangement. The final funeral arrangement for the late Mr. Anthony Dominic Mensah, father of Mrs. Leticia Ifwa Mensah, are as follows. There will be no way keeping. The, burials, the burial rite is on Saturday, the 29th of April, at Takrade in Chaba and Nafo, opposite the sawmill. And the interment is a private burial. Baptismal certificate. Members who were recently baptized are being informed that the certificate of baptism are ready. And they should kindly see Pastor Jacob Anderson for collection. Baby dedication. There will be baby dedications on Sunday, the 23rd of April, 2023. That is this coming Sunday. Parents who wish to dedicate their babies or their children to God should kindly inform Pastor Nana Boache so that their names will be noted down. Please know that the um, baby dedication is coming Sunday. So if you're here and you haven't given your name to Pastor Nana Boache, kindly do so today or during the week so that your names will be taken and you can join us for a beautiful baby dedication on Sunday. Pastors and leaders meeting. On Saturday, the 22nd of April 2023, at 7.30 a.m. prompt, there will be a meeting for all pastors, deacons, departmental leaders, MDP leaders, youth leaders. If you are here and you are a pastor, if you are here and you are a leader in any capacity, if you are here and you are a departmental leader, or you serve in any capacity as a leader, this meeting is for you. And it is this Saturday at exactly 7.30 a.m. Everyone who is in a leadership position is expected to be here. Prayer clinic. Ladies, our ladies, uh, precious rubies. I'm not feeling the fire. Precious rubies. Indeed, we are on fire for the Lord. So because we are on fire for the Lord, we will do that through our prayers. Our ladies are being invited to this month's prayer clinic on Saturday, the 29th of April, 2023, at exactly 7.30 a.m. The theme is the power of the resurrection. All ladies, if you're here and you're a lady, the gentlemen are also invited. However, all ladies here, it, is, it will be great that we'll all be here on the 29th of April at 7.30 so that we pray all kinds of prayers and we tap into the power of that was available to Jesus during his resurrection. And we know that we will see marvelous things in our lives. Have a wonderful Sunday and a wonderful week. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that you, all of you might have received this flyer. Our media convention is coming on from 28th June to 2nd July. And as, as was announced last year, every mid-year, we do a reef well convention. So our mid-year reef well convention is coming on under the theme, Marvels and Wonders. Amen. We want to come from January to June. We want to come and reef well and make sure that we are operating in the marvels and the wonders of God. The flyers are not for you. We have given them to you so that you can use it as a source of invitation, spread out make publicity, and make sure that in these set dates, we are all gathering here to have a wonderful convention. Don't let this marvels and wonders media convention pass you by. Make sure you are coming with your family. Make sure you are coming with your friends. Come and experience the marvels and wonders of God. Amen. Also, I want to bring to your attention that the end of month of April, we are going to have our consecration three days consecration and so we are having our three days consecration from 25th to 27th of may of april and it is coming off 6 p.m each night and then on the friday which is on the 28th we are going to have our mega all night if you were here last month you went you tell me that we enjoyed the presence of god 
And this month, you don't want to miss it. These are all the avenues that we can use to assess the throne room and the great things that God has given to us. So, at the end of this month, from 25th to 28th, we'll be here waiting on God, consecrating ourselves for another powerful session with God. And the theme for that is freedom from oppression. Any kind of oppression that you are going through, come here on 25th to 28th and God will set you free. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to take this opportunity to thank everybody who came here on Monday evening. On Monday, it was powerful. Come and see our GO scoring penalties. Oh, you, 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 because you didn't come, you are not excited. We enjoyed ourselves. We enjoyed ourselves. Flip the bottle. Some people were running after chicken, KFC. People were, ch- oh, Charlie, God bless the organizers. I want to tell you that next year, it will be better. Did you see that where you went, you didn't enjoy? So those who came, God bless you so much. Make it a date next year. It has come to stay. Every Easter Monday, we'll have our picnic here. And we'll enjoy ourselves. God bless you. Next Sunday, first service, we are having our dedication. Please, it will happen only in the first service. Make sure that you bring your babies, register, and then a baby dedication will be done for your child. It is from zero years to like, if your baby has not been dedicated, even if the baby is seven years old, the child is seven years and has not been dedicated. Come. You see SFs. Go. You are not here. You are not here. Shall we rise to our feet and bring the service to a close? Please, let's sit down. I nearly forgot. Last Thursday, we had a wonderful marriage ceremony. And on Friday, the marriage was blessed here by our general overseer. We have the privilege to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Wisdom Clue to come and give the church their greetings. Hallelujah. Um, It's been a long journey, and we say we are grateful. Uh, But first of all, we would want to say a big thank you to the papa and mama of the house, Reverend Wisdom Dafa McBo, and the wife, Mama Laurentia Dafa McBo. And we want to say a big thank you to our parents. If they are here, we'd like to see them. So the congregation will, yeah. We want to say a huge thank you to our best man and maid of honor, Julian and Erica. If they also here, would like to see them. To our counselors, Pastor and Mrs. Brimpong, we say thank you for your unflinching support. We are really grateful for your support. To Pastor Dan, Pastor Eric, Pastor Gabriel, and all the pastors of Grace Chapel International, we say we are grateful. Pastor, Mrs. Ellen, Sam, and everybody, we thank everybody for coming, the whole of Grace Chapel International. We say we are grateful. Thank you. Also, I wanted to give another heartfelt, uh, sincere thank you to the leadership, the staff, and the members of Grace Chapel for welcoming me. Uh, you made me feel like family from the very first day I, became, I, I started attending services here. So thank you so much for your hospitality. So we like to glorify the Lord with song. It's a very simple song, so we ask all of you and the choir to please join us. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has 
did not hear your voice. He wants you to sing again. And now only you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Shall we rise to our feet, bless the offering and bring the service to a close. Father, we thank you for blessing us. And out of your blessings, we have brought these offerings before you. Lord, look down from heaven and cause rain to fall on everything that we are doing. Let your blessings rain on us. Let us be a blessing and let us always walk in this blessing. Let men see us and say that we are the blessed of the Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. On Saturday, our pastors and leaders meeting is coming off. Please, if you are here, any kind of lead leadership position, come. If you aspire to be a leader or to be a church worker too, please, you are invited. All ushers, all choristers, all media team members, all MDP facilitators, everyone is supposed to be here. And it is ha happening here on Saturday at 7 p.m. Let's close our eyes and share the benediction. May the Lord bless and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May this week find you in a blessing. May you go into this week and experience the goodness of God. And may none of the works of darkness come near your dwelling place. Go and remain blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn to somebody say, surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. We are breaking into our MDP classes. Please, let's go into our MDP classes. First time visitors, please, please, please come to me quickly. First time visitors, please come to me. Are you a first time visitor? Shepherds, kindly take your seats as you welcome your members. All shepherds, please, let's take our seats and welcome our members into the MDP class. MDP shepherds, please, kindly welcome your members.